the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying Joseph thou son of David fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus and he shall save his people from their sins Joseph thou shalt call him Jesus say it with me Jesus again Jesus again Jesus Holy Spirit <laughs> Lord I feel something coming on but right now if by chance anywhere in this audience there is any kind of spirit that is not of God that spirit no longer has its freedom in this place for Father, this house shall be filled with the presence of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living Triune God. Now, Father, I thank you. I believe you for this moment in thy name. And all the people said, Amen and amen you may be seated I'm not going to preach this morning like Father McGee usually preaches on Sunday morning I'm just going to talk to you I'm going to try not to get too emotional I'm going to try to reserve my shirt for another service not really I'm going to give it to you like he put it on my heart and I look at Lutheran Row here on front pew this morning and I'm excited what I see but yet as I stand on this holy place I can feel already in my spirit that this entire audience needs a spiritual touch of the heavenly world anew and afresh. You see, there's something I know about you. You're under pressure. The enemy is doing everything he can do to sap your victory. Last Wednesday morning, about seven o'clock in the morning Gretchen awakened me with a very serious bark I went to her and I said girl what's wrong her boyfriend Bruce had come early that morning and she wanted to go outside and visit I opened the door and I watched the two dogs scamper and play and I went back up into my room a few minutes later and I picked up my Bible and I closed my eyes and I said, God, I don't understand something. Why are so many of your children going through spiritual purgatory in this hour? I don't comprehend. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, Do you really want to know? And I said, Daddy God, I want to know more than anything else in the world. Why? He said, It's because my servants have ceased to exalt my name. Jesus. I was watching the television this morning before I came to church in my hotel chamber 
And I admired many things I witnessed. I condoned them. But I never heard Christ's name mentioned. I listened to one preacher say, Come hear me preach, and I will tell you how to heal the sick. I don't believe that. And the reason there is so much sickness in our church today, we have taken the healing process away from Him and we've tried to make it our way and not His. Thank you, amen, Charlie. Man, Faith Tabernacle needs a revival. You're awfully quiet this morning. You notice it too, honey. But in our day, we don't hear much anymore about Jesus, cousin. We hear about personalities. We hear about theories and ideas and philosophies and revelations that somebody has found in the Word, as they say. But let us go back to our humble abode of a young man, a young lady. A young man has married a young girl that is pregnant. The child is not his, but the child is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I believe in that virgin birth. I believe in that infilling of the Holy Spirit that gave her that child in her earthly womb. But can you imagine the frustration of Joseph? I can imagine what he must have gone through. But yet the angel of the Lord came to him and gave him comfort and said, Joseph, and the only time Joseph ever had this kind of revelation. We hear very little about him in the future. We hear very little about him in the beginning. He wasn't a very important factor. But the greatest sermon that mortal man ever heard, Joseph heard by the spirit of an angel speaking to him. When the angel said, Joseph, thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be the savior of his people. That's the greatest sermon that has ever been preached by the power of the Holy Ghost in the ministering ability of an angel of glory. When I arrive in heaven and I look up and down the corners of that great city of glory and I begin to look at angels, I'm going to see one angel with a spark in his eye and I'm going to walk over to him and I'm going to say, George... You seem to be awfully happy, angel. And he'll look at me and he said, Jeremy, I'm the one that gave the message to Joseph who said, Joseph, thou shalt call his name Jesus and he shall be the savior of his people. Neighbor, we today need to have another Bethlehem experience. We need to have another experience a day of Jesus coming alive in our own lives, heart, soul, mind, and bodies. For he shall be the Savior of his people. One writer said, if his name is exalted, he will draw all men unto him. In my generation, I see no man that can raise the dead. I see no man that can turn the water into wine. I see no man that can walk on the water. I see no man that can spit on clay and make eyeballs and put in a man's head and that man come seeing. But neighbor, that same Jesus that did those miracles is alive today in Oklahoma City. All he needs to be done is reborn in our own hearts and lives and souls. Go ahead. We need that new birth. We need that marvelous experience of Jesus. 
I told somebody the other day an experience. A few days ago, I went to down to St. Petersburg, Florida to preach one service. And they literally turned people away by numbers of automobiles. And I said to somebody, it's glorious to be in a meeting like this. A hundred voice choir. An orchestra. The audience was literally electrified with unity. With the power of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't sleep very well on Sunday night. Monday morning at 11 o'clock, I was boarding an aircraft. And always when I fly, I try to get the first seat on the aircraft. That way I'm the first one off, or if it crashes, I'll be the first one to go. I like to be first. I sat down on my seat, and I thought, boy, I'm going to sleep all the way from Houston, uh, to, from Tampa to Houston. I got three pillows, put one on each side of my waist, one at my head, and I began to get all comfortable. And a big, beautiful black saint came and stood the aisle, and she said, Sir, from what I can see, it would be easier for you to move over than me to climb over. <laughs> I looked at the condition, and I agreed immediately. <laughs> I moved over next to the window. There was a table between us, and she was on the aisle. And I noticed this saint of God sitting there, and I wasn't dressed like a preacher. In fact, I was dr traveling that day in a pair of Levi's, traveling incognita. And all of a sudden, I heard something going on beside me. I heard this precious soul say, mm, precious Jesus. Mmm, precious Jesus. Mmm, Lord, precious Jesus. It was about time for us to be airborne. And all of a sudden she looked at me, she said, Lord man, does you know Jesus? And I said, yes ma'am. That beautiful soul took my hand Honey, Pan Am Airlines has never had a man or a woman to hold hands as tightly before or since. I felt the blood leaving my hands. It was almost paralyzed. <laughs> and she kept saying, Precious Jesus. Precious Lord. And we had just gotten of about 20,000 feet. And she looked at me and she said, Lord, I know who you are. I have seen you on PDF. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and that black sister talked about Jesus till we landed in Houston. And when we left the airline, right in front of all of her friends and her family, she kissed me right in the mouth and she said, Reverend, hang on to Jesus. He'll never fail. It sounds humorous. But neighbor, when has Jesus been the last time that he has been the comfort to you that you could call his name in that moment of fear or doubt or frustration and he was there to see you through the storm? We've replaced him. We've taken him out of our churches. We've taken him out of our worship. We removed him from our homes. When I was a child, my mother received much criticism across the nation. After all, she was an Assembly of God preacher's wife and that put her in the spotlight to be criticized. But my mother always did something that was very unusual. It never mattered who came to our house. It didn't matter if it was a dignitary. Our dad would pick up some tramp to bring him home and feed him. Always the end of our dining room table. No one had ever sat in that chair. Guest after guest would say to my mother, Sister Walker, why is that chair always empty? Why is that place always set? She said, That is the only place that I reserve at every meal 
for my master and my Lord. I was raised and reared with Jesus sitting at the head of our table. You say, did you ever see him? Nope, but I sure felt him. Did he ever eat the dead chicken? Nope, he shared it with me. I always had two to four drumsticks. But you let some preacher come by, and I had the back. (laughs) But not with Jesus. He always gave me the best. On this Sunday morning in Faith Tabernacle, there needs to be a resurrection. And that resurrection needs to be that Christ that was the Savior of your life 24 years ago, 25 years ago. He needs to come alive again where He becomes the authority of your life. He becomes your vocabulary. He becomes your song. He becomes your prayer. He becomes every word of your life. Jesus. And it will conquer the battles. It will conquer the storms. This morning I went to a couple in this church. And I'm very careful when I come to any church. In fact, we've gotten to a place that we very rarely ever, under any circumstances, associate with a pastor or his staff. Because living with the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are within my heart, it's very difficult. The Lord reveals many things to me. And I have to be very cautious that people say, Oh, the preacher told you that. Remember this. One thing you must know about Jerry B. Walker. He will never stoop so low to repeat to an audience what a pastor has said about one of his members. The Holy Spirit can do it. A few weeks ago, a burden hit my heart. And I felt my very heart being ripped out of its cords for somebody in this church. And I said, but God, I don't understand this. I didn't ask for this. Why, this must be the pain that a lady goes through with the birth of a child, a spirit of travail. I was in agony. And I could see this young couple. And I saw the devil rare up and the devil said out loud to those about him I'm going to destroy this home and I cried out loud in the night devil you can't touch that home they belong to Jesus neighbor it's time that we begin to take authority over these things that come to our households, uh, to our homes, uh, to our families. Uh, Neighbor, there's one thing the devil will flee from. uh, When you call the name Jesus, uh, honey, he ducks his tail and runs for cover. We need to exalt Jesus. In that same hour, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that we are now entering into a moment that God is separating the wheat from the shaft. He's separating the weeds from the golden grain. Neighbor, there's a lot of trouble going on and separation going on, but don't let it trouble you. Look up, your redemption surely draweth nigh because Jesus is coming for a bride that calls him by name. I stood here on Friday night and married a beautiful couple. As I looked at Mark and I looked at Wheaty, I thought I've known them all their lives. I love these kids. And while I was performing the ceremony, I've never seen anybody so happy in all of my life. I thought, my God, I've never seen anybody so happy. It must be wonderful to have that kind of love. And right in the ceremony, She said to him, Mark, I love you. I thought, honey, listen to what I'm saying. Mark's paying me to tie this knot. But she called his name, Mark, I love you. Right during the ceremony, she was pitching woo at him. Why can't it be the same way with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Why can't he be that kind? 
kind of a friend that you can say to him every hour of every day, I love you, Jesus. But now we only use him when we get in a tight. We only use him when we get in trouble. Last Monday, I encountered a problem that was quite severe. And I said, you know, it's strange about you now. A few days ago when I saw you, prayer, this thing of Jesus wasn't too important. But now because a marriage is in jeopardy, you're saying, Jerry B., pray, pray, pray. Neighbor, there's no time to pray when you're in trouble. It's get enough prayers in advance. When you get in trouble, that'll take care of it in advance. His name is Jesus. He shall be the Savior of His people. It's not Kenneth McGee, Jeremy Walker, Copeland, Hagen, Roberts, whoever it may be. But neighbor, it's Jesus who's the Savior of His people. We need for Him to come alive in our hearts once again. The other morning, the team was all sound asleep aboard Evangeline. And I was driving, and it seemed like I always get the graveyard shift. I don't understand that. I've never understood it. I preach out my soul, and then I have to drive the graveyard shift. I know why they call it graveyard. And I was coming down the freeway, going into Lafayette, Louisiana. And all of a sudden, I looked at the end of my headlights. 38,000 pounds was behind me. Six of the most beautiful people in the world were sound asleep. And all of a sudden, me a great big tractor trailer truck, empty, jackknifed. I put on my brakes of Evangeline. I didn't say, State Farm, Lords of London, get ready to pay off. I cried for the name of Jesus. Neighbor, the wheels never squealed. They never burnt rubber. But I watched that beautiful big 38,000 pound silver eagle begin to glide around the side of the truck that was across the highway. How did it happen? I don't know. But neighbor, there is still power in the name of Jesus. He's still a liberator. His name is called on the battlefield. His name is called in the moment of terror. His name is called in the moment of distress. His name is called in the minute of pain or grief or sorrow. But neighbor, his name needs to be called in a moment of love and praise and worship and adoration. For he is the Savior of his people. I'm not going to preach this morning. But I feel it coming on. This Jesus needs to come back to faith tabernacle and live and reign and rule as the author and the finisher of our faith. I was reading an article the other day in Charisma. And as I read the article about Oral Roberts and the great faith city, man, I'm for that man. I pray for him every day, many times a day. And they were talking about him having a vision of Jesus. I do not doubt that whatsoever. Neighbor Jesus can be an inch tall. Or he can be as tall as from the earth to the tip of the sky. Whatever circumstance you may be in. That's the size of a man. He will be to see you through without a blemish or a scar or a scratch. Joseph. You shall call him Jesus. A humble man he is. But notice in his earth ministry. Notice that 70% of his ministry was divine healing. But yet, I have an audience this morning of about 800. That's a beautiful audience. Got a skinny place right here. I don't know why that place is right there. We've got to get that filled up tonight. Or I refuse to preach. If the airlines can go on strike, I can too. (laughs) 
But this church needs this Jesus to come alive in our hearts. The other night, we were speaking at PTL on Tuesday evening. We had a healing service that was just literally colossal. It was supernatural. And they made the statement, we've never seen healing here like this. I would just walk close to them and they'd just fall out. Here come an Italian young chap. Mm, he probably weighed 200, 250, somewhere in that. I mean, he was a big hunk of man. A mustache. Tony permanent. Wide shoulders. And he was weeping like a baby. And I reached up to pray for him. And all of a sudden he said, Jesus. I prayed for many more people. Probably another hour the service lasted. And after the service was over, one of our board of directors from Greensboro, North Carolina, was standing talking to me while the team was getting ready to leave. And this young man came to me still weeping like a broken hearted. He said, sir, today my father drove up to the gate of Heritage USA, stopped the car, threw my clothes out the door and told me to get out and never wants to see me again. He said, I didn't know what this place was. I've never been religious. I've lived in a home that's broken. My father an alcoholic. And he just threw me out. And said this is it. He said but tonight while you were preaching. I had never been in a service before in my life. And tears were literally falling they weren't just dripping they were squirting it reminded me of a a, a Lincoln automobile car washer a windshield washer just whoosh, 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 whoosh. and he grabbed me and he said for the first time in 24 years of living I find that love is real I said, do you have anything to eat on? He said, I have nothing. One of the beautiful black saints. Oh, that's the reason I love for the black saints to come to church. They always bless the preacher. And sugar had blessed me that night with some green. All watered up. I didn't know what it was. I still don't know what it was. It could have been a thousand dollar bill. I never had that happen to me before, but I'm praying for that day. And you know, I reached in my pocket, got out that wadded green that Sugar had given me. I don't know what her name was, but she was, I just called her Sugar because she was so sweet. And I gave it to the boy. The next morning, we went back to PTL. The young man came to me and he said, Sir, I do not know how to tell you this. I was going to have to sleep on my coat out underneath the tree and said one of the elderly couples have a beautiful Airstream mobile home down here and they've invited me to be their guest. He said, you know what did it? I said, no. He said, I hadn't had anything to eat and you gave me money I had a roof over my head, air conditioned. Said it's because of Jesus. 
Wednesday came. And again, this big bruise of a young man, still weeping. He said, sir, I can't cut the tears off. I've never cried in my life. But I just cry continuously, and I am so happy. They're happy tears. He said, look how clean they are. Does he abide in your home? Does he abide in your household? Does he abide in your soul? Does he abide in this sanctuary? Neighbor, the angel said, Joseph, he shall be the savior of his people. That means a lot of things. Not only soul salvation, physical healing, mental healing, marital healing, financial healing, you name it. That's what he came for. Jesus. I have never been more convinced in all of my life than I am right now that this Jesus that I exalt to you is desirous to come alive in your heart. Thursday I arrived in Oklahoma City. Thursday night after the rehearsal after a marvelous rehearsal dinner that almost put Scott in the poorhouse, I went to my room and I knelt by my bed and all I said was, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the comfort that came just because I call the name Jesus. It makes the difference. It makes the difference. I preached a funeral a few days ago with a beautiful family. A grandmother 84 years young a writer, a marvelous woman. 6.30 on Monday morning, the angel came to carry her to heaven. And she said, Jesus, her body was so destroyed by cancerous growths that the flesh would break open like it was rotten, like a rotten watermelon. And all of a sudden she said to her daughter, she said, sweetheart, I apologize. I've told you about him all of your life. I've lived for him over 70 years. I've loved him. I've served him. I've written books. But daughter, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you how beautiful he really is. He's standing by my bed. I wonder if any of us know how beautiful he is. We know him as a savior. We know him as a keeper, a provider, a fighter, a warrior, a general. We know him as a king, as a lord, a master, a servant. A carpenter. We know him as a shepherd. We know him as the bright and the morning star. We know him as the beginning and the ending. We know him as the son of a living God.
We know him as a doctor. We know him as a lawyer. We know him as a surgeon. And we're going to know him to be our judge. But I ask you this question. Do you know him as your friend? shall call his name Jesus I think of the writer who wrote what a friend we have in Jesus but audience have we gotten so caught up in this thing living we've lost him the next time you feel the enemy come in your house begin to call on Jesus the other night I was sitting on the patio of my cottage Gretchen was laying down beside me and the moon was so light it just made you want to hug a tree it was so beautiful and in Houston we've had some rain believe it or not and for some reason we have mosquitoes they're large they're almost the frying stage they're big And I kept hearing this one buzz around me. And I thought, go ahead, you dauber. And all of a sudden he had a partner. And their wings were in perfect harmony. And one said, are we going to bite him? And the other one said, you don't want to bite this one. He's full of Jesus. 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 Every head is bowed. How I desire on this day to express unto thee my love. Thou hast known that love. Thou hast felt that love. And thou hast known that it is good. Little one, the enemy has desired. To fetch thee from my hand. To pluck thee from my flock. But my little lambs. I have laid myself across the gate. That the enemy shall not rob you. Of this place. In your life. For you see my son and my daughter. If I permitted the enemy to move you from this flock, you not only would lose your encounter, but you would lose your children to the world. I am standing in this house on this morn. And I stand in this house to renew that love that thou hast known in the past I have not come to condemn you I have not come to chasten you I have not even come to judge thee 
But I have come to this house to love you. The decision thou is trying to make is not yours. That decision has already been made by your father. Rest in me. Rest in me. And be cautious to listen to the voice of your Lord. My child, in this very moment of time, I stand in this place. To bring you from that place of unhappiness to total joy, saith the Lord. I want every head bowed, no one leaving. The service is not over. This is a very sacred moment. And I'm going to ask of something. Right now, I don't want you to worry about who's sitting near you, behind you, beside you, or in front of you. But I want every person in this audience that feels your need of Jesus. If you feel your need of Him, would you stand right where you are? If I was sitting in the audience, I would be standing because I need Him. Don't stand because somebody else stands. I want you to stand in honesty. Right now, I'm not going to ask you to pray. While I pray, I want you to begin to use this phrase. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want the entire audience to begin to say that over and over while I pray for you. If you don't do it, it's a slap in his face. And before this day's over, you may need him. We lost two of our little orphans a few days ago in a horrible accident in India. They were both electrocuted. But only one hour before their death, one little boy said to the other little boys, he said, when I go home to Jesus, you see right over there by that crick, I want to be right there when I meet Jesus. One hour later, he was standing almost on the very spot he had pointed at and met his maker. Nine thousand volts of electricity went through his body. But this morning, if he could speak to me, he'd say, Jerry B, tell him Jesus loves him. Jesus cares. Pastor McGee, I feel like God's going to perform a miracle in lives this morning. I prayed during the night last night that some of you would get so hungry, so thirsty for Jesus. That you'd just begin to cry out to Him. Begin to repeat those words, I love you, Jesus. Father, as the minister that has been ordained to bring this message to this people. 
right now, Holy Spirit. I pray thee, Father, to minister to this audience. Every man, every woman, every lad, every lassie. May they feel that balm of Gilead wiping up their broken hearts. Bathing away that tear of sorrow. Easing that mind of pressure. And as that angel came and said, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall be the Savior of his people. Father, I believe it. Holy Spirit, I believe it. Spirit, minister to this people. Lord, fill that vacuum. Fill that hollow place with your love, your spirit, and your power. Heavenly air world, May the angels of glory come and minister to this audience. May the Spirit of Heaven minister to that man, that woman, that young man. Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Let your soul sing this song. Let your soul sing it aloud. I to sing it one more time before we're seated but take the hand of your neighbor and as you take that hand I just want you to lift it up to the Lord just lift it up beside you and throw your head back like a little sparrow on a newborn morn that's finding that piece of grain and let's look into the portals of heaven and let's sing it with our brother and with our sister will you do it sing it with me saints I
with me, but let's sing it one more time. People, the Lord's ministering. The Holy Spirit is ministering. Sing it one more time, everybody. this morning This is the Holy Spirit ministering. The Holy Spirit is ministering to your lives. The Holy Spirit.
audience, I feel inspired by the Holy Spirit. Pastor McGee had asked me to receive an offering for the evangelistic work for the team this morning at the close of the service. But I'm not going to do that. There's a great need and a lot of you will not be here tonight that are here this morning and you would like to give to this team. I'm going to ask the ushers to stand at the doors. I want an usher at this door. I want two ushers at the back doors. And if you brought your offering and you'd like to just give a love offering to the Lord, the usher will be standing there as you go out. But I felt impressed for people that just need a brand new touch. I mean from the top to the bottom. I know that all of you are anxious to go to Sullivan's or Plum Tree or somewhere to eat. But I feel like we ought to just open the altar. Son, thou hast obeyed my spirit. This that's what thou hast now said to this audience is of me. Therefore, those that shall step forward, I shall give even a greater depth of my love and my power. For this is the moment that I am preparing my people for greater things. Things they know not of. But even this day serpents shall die. The enemy shall be bruised and victories shall be won in this place. I speak these words to thee, my son. I am grateful that thou hast listened, saith the Lord. Mm. I want everyone that feels an urgency in your heart, your spirit to pray. I want you to step from where you are. The team's going to sing and play. You that have to go, please be very quiet. But this is a very sacred moment this morning. God's doing something in Faith Tabernacle.